The White House says a top ISIS leader has been killed during a raid in Syria by U.S. special forces. President Joe Biden ordered that raid. ISIS, he says, has been trying to increase its power in the region. CBC's Makta Gabriel Selassie has more on the nighttime raid and the man who was the target of the mission. President Biden said this proves America's ability to take out terrorists, and he said this ISIS leader was a major threat to the world. He named him as Haji Abdullah. Another name that's been given is Abu Ibrahim al-Hashimi al-Kuraji. Biden said that this raid has been planned since late last year. This is an image of him in the Situation Room with Vice President Kamala Harris as this was all going on. Now, this took place in a northwestern part of Syria near the Turkish border. And Biden didn't give us a timeline of what, how this raid started or when it started, but we heard from witnesses that said they heard gunfire around midnight or 1 o'clock in the morning. And since then, there have been some images of the aftermath of this raid. We've seen bodies being pulled out of rubble and an emergency response group, the White Helmets, says that about 13 people, at least 13 people, were killed. Now, here's President Biden uh, explaining what took place and what efforts were made to reduce the risk to others. We made a choice to pursue a special forces raid at a much greater risk than our, to our own people, rather than targeting him with an airstrike. We made this choice to minimize civilian casualties. Our team is still compiling the report, but we do know that as our troops approach to capture the terrorist, in a final act of desperate cowardice, he, with no regard to the lives of his own family or others in the building, he chose to blow himself up. President Biden said the now deceased leader was a driving force in the genocide of the Yazidi people. He also said he was responsible for a recent attack on a Syrian prison, an attack that resulted in the deaths of more than 100 people. Magda Gebra Salasa, CBC News, Washington.